My voice is a little bit quieter today because I have a lot of sleepy heads in the house. But anyway, welcome to today's video. I have a beautiful occult inspired quilt to share with you all today. Hubby and I recently attended a local horror convention where we giddily explored aisles of nostalgic merchandise, 80s and 90s figurines, and original artwork. And some of the items that really caught my eye were the handcrafted Halloween quilts elegantly sewn by a fellow fiber artist. Unfortunately, I didn't get her name and I very much regret that, but we shared our growing love for quilting which to this day is unfortunately looked, on, looked down upon as a bit of a granny hobby. But grannies are awesome. I very much miss mine. And I've also gained an all new respect for quilting after discovering art quilts and the quills, I said quills, the art quilts and the quilts of G's Bend. Quilting is so rich with history and cultural significance. I used a book by Pam and Nikki Lintot called Jelly Roll Quilts in a Weekend. This amazing book helps you knock out quilts in a single weekend using only jelly rolls. However, since I'm still new to quilting and I did not use jelly rolls for this project, this quilt actually took me about a month to make. I'm also a control freak when it comes to choosing colorways for my projects, so I decided to pick up some Halloween themed fabrics in dusky autumnal shades instead of using prepackaged strips. I also combined them with some fabric remnants from other projects. I had to cut everything out, so it definitely did not take me a single weekend, but of course, this is me. I'm all about self-inflicted torture. The pattern I chose to replicate is the sundial pattern. You can use either dark or light contrast or color contrast to get the effect of a pinwheel. Then you create an easy square border and bind it all together. I love this pattern because it looks more complicated than it actually is. You don't need to cut any triangles out, you simply sew three long strips of fabric together to create a long rectangle, and then you cut six and a half inches or 16 and a half centimeter squares out of them. Cut each square into triangles and then sew them all together, alternating the contrasting triangles. When it comes to Halloween, my style is, I would say it's a bit rustic with elements of the occult. As I continue to experiment with me made designs, I'm finding that my style is a bit more grungy and unsettling than I initially realized. I enjoy that farmhouse look so, so much, but it has to have that touch of spookiness in the macabre. I mean, to be honest, we do have skulls and thing on our fireplace mantle after all. <laughs> Since Halloween does have an edge to it, I also ventured into metallic features. Dagger-like metals and iridescent gleams snuck their way into my project, so some of the black fabrics have metallic patterns. I wanted the purple fabrics to take up the majority of the space, so the pops of orange were used sparingly to attract the eye just enough to create interest. Unfortunately, this project wasn't without scraps, so off these go to the cabbage bin where they will eventually become stuffing. I finally managed the hard part, which is getting everything cut up into squares and sewing them all together. And everything looks pretty cool. And now I am assembling all of the panels. So if you notice, it's a little bit more complicated than just sewing the triangles together. I also had to make sure that the darker panels, in this case, it's going to be the black, were horizontal while the purple and orange panels are going to be vertical. And, it, and um, the point is to actually make it look like there's a pinwheel going all the way around the circle. So I, <laughs> I almost messed up, thankfully I didn't, but it was, it was really, it was a little tricky to just make sure that I cut the squares correctly or else I would have had all the panels going in the same direction, which wasn't the goal. I need this. Come on. Sorry, I need that. So after an hour of fighting with my kitty, I think it's time for a break. Okay, so I've started putting together the panels and for the most part, they look pretty darn cool. Except for this one. I realized that this is the only one where I really messed up the direction in which the black panels are going. It should be horizontal like these and it's vertical. And I'm not gonna worry about it because it's the only mistake in within all of the panels and I'm exhausted and I'm too tired and lazy to fix it. 
Besides, I don't think anybody is going to notice this random panel. At least the pinwheel effect, it's still pretty visible and the color is correct. So we're just gonna keep on going with it. The hardest part about creating this quilt was maintaining my creative stamina. I never realized how intense quilting was until I decided to make a quilt that transcended beyond just squares. Although there are different techniques available that can cut the cutting and assembling times in half, it's still a labor of love as well as precision. I'm not going to pretend that the insides of these are pretty. Okay, so I have ironed out the backing here, and as you can probably see, I ran out of black flannel. So, since I'm trying to use up my fabric stash and I didn't want to buy anything else, I'm gonna do this grandma style and just use what I've got and make it work. So in this case, there's going to be a random red square on the bottom of this quilt, but I don't really care. <laughs> um. I know that I could have definitely taken advantage of this beautiful fabric by maybe doing something more decorative on the back, but I'll be honest, I am just so exhausted from just setting up the top of the sandwich that I'm just gonna let her rip and forget that the back is gonna be a little bit strange because what matters is the top of the quilt. So under my couch, I've got some extra all natural cotton batting and this I'm going to put as the inside of the quilt. I am sweating after ironing this whole thing. Quilting is an exercise, y'all. All right, so I'm trying to figure out how I wanna do this. I think what I'm gonna do is trim off the excess. Actually, no, maybe I will pin down the squares first and then trim off the excess batting and backing. And then what I'm going to do is stitch the pattern in the ditch. So you shouldn't see really too much of the, um, the thread pattern going along the edges here. I think what I'm gonna do is definitely stitch in the ditch diagonally and then I'm also maybe gonna do just one, just a couple of center um, stitches as well. I tried to get it as flat as I possibly could. There are some spots that are still kind of wrinkly. I'm gonna try to press it one more time, but I pressed the heck out of this and <laughs> I am exhausted and it's not perfect, but I think it still looks really good. This is actually probably the straightest quilt I've ever made and I'm really proud of that. I'm now at the end of this quilt creation and I'm going to be quite honest, towards the end I did get a little bit lazy and a little bit sloppy because I really want this to be done by Halloween. And so just to show you guys some of the things I am proud of and not so proud of, when it came to sewing or quilting everything together. I have a lot of situations where I rushed and I would use a different colored thread or as you can see here, accidentally sewed the panels where the um, hem, the hems are facing the wrong direction. But I'm also at that point where it's fine. Don't really care anymore because this was such a tiring quilt to make. Um, another thing, the borders, normally I would hand sew these together, but because of the uh, time range I have and because I'm honestly, again, tired and lazy because this has been a very, very detail-oriented project, I'm just going to uh, do a straight stitch along the seams and then just hem everything up at the corners as neatly as I can. I'm not too concerned about how perfect this quilt is. It's meant to be a memory building quilt. 
meaning I expect to use it every single year with the intention of watching scary story, uh, well, scary movies and classic um, horror classics with hubby because that's what we love to do during Halloween. And we love to enjoy those holidays together with some comfy food, soup, stews, lots of pumpkin. And I feel like this quilt would be perfect for building those memories. While the afternoon sun shimmered over my quilt, I watched in awe. The quilt sort of glows and the metallic details really shimmer. I added purple embroidery to the corners to complement the border and it just really makes the whole thing pop. Thank you for taking the time to watch my little quilting vlog. I hope you enjoyed. I'd appreciate it if you could help me out by subscribing to my channel, pressing the like button, sharing, all that jazz. And for more vlogs and articles like this, please check out my website, homestylealchemy.com for more cozy folk crafts. See you later.